It's fair to say that the parody movie has largely fallen out of favour in recent years. In the age of social media and memes, our endless need for comedy has the best jokes out within hours of them hitting cinemas. Memes are like fruit flies now, born to live wholesome lives for all of a day before moving from our mortal coil and never being seen again. Still, there is no denying the brilliance of classic parodies which perfectly capture and enthusiastically mock the style, tone, characters and plot of their inspiration, while playfully exaggerating their most iconic features. Living, breathing movie memes in parodies are a rare and underrated currency. And very occasionally, parody gold dust will take on a most bizarre and unexpected life of its own, with a disposable or thoroughly tongue-in-cheek gag finding itself in a future entry of the very thing it was originally lampooning. These parody movies had some of their most memorable jokes turn out far truer than they ever expected, proving weirdly prophetic despite how utterly ridiculous they seemed on paper. And that, truly, is when a parody ascends to become something more. Fly free, dear parodies, you were greater than we ever gave you credit for. I am the scary movie plot twist, Ash from What Culture, and these are seven movie parodies that somehow happen for real. 7. Spaceballs predicted endless Friday the 13th and Rocky sequels Mel Brooks's Spaceballs is one of the most hilarious parodies ever made, a delightfully daft Star Wars piss take which remains a beloved cult classic to this day. But in addition to being good old-fashioned funny, Spaceballs offers up a prescient comedy on a franchise-obsessed Hollywood. This is evidenced no better than by the unforgettable scene where the villainous Dark Helmet and his underling Colonel Sanders visit the video rental store aboard their ship. Though they're actually looking for a copy of Spaceballs itself, resulting in one of the greatest fourth wall breaks in movie history, eagle-eyed viewers might notice that Sanders briefly walks past cassettes for 14 entries into both the Rocky and Friday the 13th franchises. In 1987, Rocky and Friday the 13th had released only four and six movies respectively, but some 30 plus years later there are now eight Rocky movies with a ninth in development, while Friday the 13th has 12 movies with the 13th currently kicking about. Needless to say, Friday the 13th will definitely hit part 14 within the next decade, and at the rate they're cranking out the Creed movies, there's no reason to believe Rocky won't make it to that number too. But in 1987, it must have seemed like such a funny joke, right? 6. Superhero movies Terminally Ill Villain was copied by The Amazing Spider-Man 2 at the height of the early 2000s parody boom, Superhero Movie was released, from Chernobyl creator Craig Mazin, no less, as a spoof of countless comic book films, with the most obvious heavy hitter in Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man. With that in mind, the villainous character of Lou Landers, aka Hourglass, was clearly modelled on Willem Dafoe's deliciously hammy Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin, albeit with a major revision. In Spider-Man, Osborn simply performs experiments upon himself for the sake of scientific advancement and is accidentally driven insane. While in Superhero Movie, Landers is a mortally ill businessman who does so out of desperate necessity and similarly loses his mind. Hilariously, the whole terminally ill tweak was then recycled for the rebooted Amazing Spider-Man franchise, where in the second movie, a dying Norman Osborn is driven mad by his disease though admittedly, he's a minor character in this instance. But still, stolen content. 5. Last Action Hero's wife trolling is played mostly straight in true lies Last Action Hero might be one of the most underrated movies of the last 25 years, and outrageously ahead of its time skewering of overblown action films, shot with deadpan delight by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of the many, many memorable metagags in the film, one of the funniest sees Arnie's action hero Jack Slater playing a recording of himself over the phone in order to trick his wife. Her conversations are apparently predictable enough that Slater's recording, full of yeah, 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 and uh huh, is enough to cover for his absence. Amusingly, this joke was actually played relatively straight in Arnie's very next film, The Terrific True Lies, which, while a quasi-parody of action films itself, is also a damn great genre flick in its own right. The scene in question sees bored wife turned spy Helen Tasker visiting a hotel room in order to seduce a target, unaware that the entire spy setup was simply an attempt by her husband Harry, a real spy, to spice up their marriage. As a result, Harry sits in the shadows of the hotel room in order to disguise himself, while playing a tape of pre-recorded exotic dialogue. Just like Arnie's prior movie spouse, Helen is also unable to tell the difference between a human and a recording, though it is played without any of Last Action Hero's self-aware sneer. That two Arnie movies featured the same gag within a 12-month period is pretty damn bizarre. 4. Adaptation Guest Identities Plot Twist 
Charlie Kaufman's Oscar-winning classic adaptation might not immediately scream parody, but with its sharp critique of conventional Hollywood genre fare culminating in a finale that is literally a Hollywood ending, it absolutely is one. One of the movie's more memorable scenes sees Charlie Kaufman's goofball twin brother Donald writing a spec script for a trashy thriller called The Three. The film would feature a twist ending where the three central characters are revealed to be fabrications in the mind of a serial killer suffering from multiple personality disorder. Charlie hilariously tells him the only idea more overused than serial killers is multiple personality, and so the slating of unimaginative, low-effort psychological thrillers was complete. Until, that is, Columbia Pictures, the very same studio behind Adaptation, released hit thriller Identity a few months later, which touted the very same plot twist, that the film's ten main characters were all imagined personalities in the mind of a mentally ill murderer. Well played, Columbia. Well played indeed. 3. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back Influenced Ray's Big Star Wars Moment Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is a delightfully rude mockery of Hollywood as a whole, but also an affectionate ribbing of fan culture that, in many respects, actually felt years ahead of its time. Kevin Smith's comedy is particularly fixated on Star Wars, leading to a cinematic sequence in which Jay and Silent Bob sneak onto the set of the Bluntman and Chronic movie and battle Mark Hamill himself, who portrays that film's villain, Cockknocker. After Hamill's baddie pulls out a lightsaber, Silent Bob uses his force powers to catapult his own laser sword across the room and into its hands. It's a neat moment, and one which became infinitely more hilarious once Star Wars The Force Awakens came out and Rey did the very same thing during a final battle with Kylo Ren. Similarly, a desperate, unarmed Rey used her force powers to transport a lightsaber past the powerful antagonist and into her hands. A coincidence? Perhaps, but you never know for sure. 2. An Austin Powers twist got recycled in an actual Bond film The Austin Powers trilogy was of course a spot-on spoof of the James Bond franchise, enthusiastically slamming the series' most well-worn tropes and frequent divergences into laughable camp. This culminated in the third and final Austin Powers film, Goldmember, revealing that Austin and his arch-nemesis Dr. Evil are in fact long-lost brothers. An appropriately silly reveal that perfectly mocked Bond's penchant for hyper-convoluted plot twists, right? Except, Bond appeared to take unintentional inspiration from Goldmember for Spectre, which dropped the clangor of a plot twist that antagonist Blofeld was 007's long-lost adoptive brother. Oh, given that Goldmember is widely credited with killing the campy Pierce Brosnan years and prompting the grittier Craig-starring reboot, it is all too ironic that his penultimate film looped back around to imitate the very thing it was desperately trying to distance itself from. 1. Galaxy Quest basically predicted Star Trek Picard It is no secret that Galaxy Quest is a wonderfully warm-hearted parody of Star Trek, whilst also engaging with nerd culture and intense fandom in prescient ways which remain just as relevant, if not more so, in the age of social media. The film memorably ends with the Galaxy Quest TV series being revived some 18 years after its original run, which reflects the fact that Star Trek The Next Generation premiered 18 years after Star Trek The Original Series concluded. But recent history has made the parallel even more hilarious, as the upcoming The Next Generation follow-up Star Trek Picard will premiere next year, another 18 years after Captain Jean-Luc Picard last appeared on screen in 2002's movie Star Trek Nemesis. Back in 1999, Galaxy Quest filmmakers could have never anticipated how aggressive revival culture would become, with dozens of defunct series now getting mostly half-baked comebacks. But the movie's revival of its own chintzy sci-fi TV series was clearly done with the tongue sticking firmly in the cheek, and yet, the upcoming Picard appears to be a relatively serious-minded sequel to the Next Generation era. Go figure. Hello YouTube, we're turning things up to 11 with the launch of What Culture Music. It's our brand new channel featuring all those lists you just can't get enough of, including creepy hidden messages in your favourite pop songs. As well as radio friendly songs that detail literal murder. That's as well as chatty faces where we get personal with you on our sordid musical tastes, in-depth discussion podcasts and we're even doing quality fun stuff like tournaments and quizzes too. There's going to be something for everybody so come on over and make some sweet Sweet, sweet music with us. Or just watch the videos, that works too. Like, share and subscribe at the link below and we will see you there. Bye. Bye! And that's our list. What other parodies have turned into actual movie plot points? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and come back again soon for some more parodied film content. Thanks for watching.